Welcome to this comprehensive guide on setting up Kubeflow pipelines. In this video, we will demonstrate Kubeflow pipelines and empower you to set up with confidence. Part 1. Understanding Kubeflow pipelines. What is Kubeflow pipelines and why it is crucial in the realms of machine learning? Kubeflow pipelines streamlines ML workflows, making orchestration, deployment and scaling easy. Its core components, Kubeflow, pipelines and the user interface are the foundation for your ML journey. Part 2. Prerequisites What do you need before diving into Kubeflow pipelines? You will need a robust Kubernetes cluster, the backbone of your ML operations. Part 3. Installing Kubeflow pipelines How do you install Kubeflow pipelines? Step by step, we will configure Kubeflow pipelines on your Kubernetes cluster. We will also show you how to access and configure the user interface. Part 4. Building your first pipelines how do you bring your first ML pipeline to life? We will guide you through defining pipeline components and adding custom code. Learn the power of reusability to replicate, modify and scale your pipelines. How do you run and monitor your pipelines? See the magic as we initiate your pipelines and monitor its progress. We will be your troubleshooting wizard for common issues. So without any further ado, let's start with the video. First of all, I'm going to open Firefox on my computer and I'm going to clone my repository. For cloning, just click on the code button and copy the link. Then you can open a terminal by using Ctrl Alt T. This shortcut will open a terminal window. Now you can simply clone the repository by using git clone. If you get an error saying command git not found, you can simply install git by using sudo apt install git. After git is installed, you can simply use your up arrow key to go back to the git clone command and run it. As you can see, I have successfully cloned my github repository. You can find the guide pdf in the cloned repository. For that, open file explorer and open the folder. You will find a pdf file. You can open that and you will find all the documents and all the commands that we have run in this video. You will also find a Jupyter notebook. Now, with this, you know all the commands that you need for installing and setting up your Kubernetes, after that installing Minikube, and after that setting up Kubeflow. We will install Docker on a computer first. First, we need to download all the GPG keys. With this command, all the GPG keys will be installed and saved. Now, with this command, we are going to install all the Docker packages. I have sped up this process, for you it may take more time. Now we will download and install Minikube. After this, we are going to start our cluster. For this, we need to add a user to the new Docker group. For that, I'm going to use this command. Make sure that you're using this command without root privileges. After this, we are going to start our Minikube. For that, I'm going to use Minikube start. Now this process is going to take some time, so please be patient and make sure that you are running this command as well without root privileges. You can see that I have successfully started Minikube. Now we are going to interact with the cluster. For this I am going to use kubectl get po space dash a. If it says that kubectl is not found, then you can install kubectl by using sudo snap install kubectl space dash dash classic this command is going to install kubectl on your computer after this by pressing the up arrow we can go back to the kubectl command and run it you can see that minikube is running you can check that by using the status bar now we are going to start by deploying our kubeflow pipelines for that i will just copy paste all the code from the pdf and wait when you will use kubectl command to see all the processes, you will find that most of them are not running. So please be patient, this process is going to take almost 20 to 30 minutes. There is a possibility that you see some crash look back of error. Now this error is going to be automatically fixed for most cases when you are going to give some time and all the other processes are running because some of the processes need other processes to run first. 
Now we will use port forwarding to access our Kubeflow pipeline UI. The process is going to run on localhost 8080. You can simply open Firefox and check that the Kubeflow UI is working. After this, we are going to install some Python libraries. First of all, we need to install IPY kernel. If you are going to use ls command, then you will see a requirements.txt file. All the other libraries can be installed by using pip install r requirements.txt. In another terminal window, I am going to type code and press enter. This command is going to open VS Code. Now, I'm going to use Ctrl plus K and Ctrl plus O to open a new folder. Now I'm going to select my repository folder where all the files are already installed and then press enter. After this process is done, I'm going to open the extension tab and install two extensions. The extensions are Python and Jupyter. After this is done, I'm going to open my Jupyter notebook. Now I'm going to run each block of code one by one. In the first block, I am importing all the important libraries. But before that, we have to select a kernel. I am going to select Python, that is the global version of Python, as a kernel. As you can see, right now it is installed as 3.10.12. In the second block of code, I am going to show you which version of Kubeflow pipeline I am using. Now in the third block of code, I am going to prepare the data. For this, I have created a function named prepare data and I am doing very simple pre-processing of the data. I am using the pandas library and with that I am going to open a csv file that has all the data. You will see that I have imported all the libraries again in the third block of code. Now this is because a new container will be initialized for running this code. And we will be needing to import all the libraries again for a successful execution of this function. I am processing the data in this function. In this code, x will have all the predictors and y will have the target data. And I am saving x train x test y train y test by using numpy.save. In the training basic classifier, I am loading the data for x train and y train by using numpy.load. Now I am training the classifier by using logistic regression. And then with pickle, I am just dumping this model file. Again, I am reminding to import all the dependencies for each block of code. This is very specific for kubeflow. Now in predict on test data function, I am loading the data in x train and doing predictions with the model that I have trained before. In the predict prob on test data function, I am going to do similar things but I am going to use a function called predict proba. Now this will give you the predicted probabilities of each classes. In the get matrices function, I just want the matrices to be printed. I'm going to do some machine learning work and after that I'm going to print the matrices. Now the real Kubeflow pipeline work starts here. Now for every function above, I'm going to create a component. Component creation would be done by using kfp.component.create component from function. The arguments that you need to pass in this function is function, base image, packages to install. Now base image is the python version and packages to install are the libraries that are needed for the function to work. Similarly, I am going to do this for all the other functions as well. But make sure that all the dependencies and all the libraries that are required needs to be installed and needs to be defined in the package to install. So just now I have created all the kubeflow components, I have still not created the pipelines. Now in the next block of code, I am going to define the pipelines and I will be using dsl.pipeline. With this, I am going to initialize the pipeline and then I can pass the name and the description. Then I am defining a pipeline function that is iris classifier pipeline and I am passing the data path as argument. In the next five lines, I am defining the persistent volume. I am doing this by using dsl.volume operation. After that, I'm going to give it a name, the resource name, the size, like how much memory it is going to use. Like here, I have defined one gigabyte and the modes. The mode is read write operation. After this, we have to bind all the components that you have created in the above blocks. First, we're going to prepare the data task by using create step prepare data. I'm adding this function to the volume. Similarly, I have to do this for all the other components. You can see dot after in 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th and 6th. 
This is because I want the other function to run only when the previous has finished. So I've mentioned each and every one in a sequence. You can see that I have created data path for all the component functions and the path is slash data. I'm disabling the cache in the next six lines of code. In the next block of code, I'm compiling all the things. And for compiling, I'm using kfp.compiler.compiler.compile and I'm passing the pipeline function and the package path. Now this is going to create a YAML file and you can see the YAML file here. Now this YAML file is going to have the whole code of your pipeline. It will have all the steps, for example, get matrix. This YAML file can also be shared with your team members and you can create an experiment by using this file. Now I'm going to show you with this next block of code how you can create an experiment with code. For this, you will need a Kubeflow pipeline client. As I've installed this in my local host, kfp.client will initialize the client. But there's a possibility that Kubeflow is installed in a dedicated server. So for that, you will need the code that I have commented. You will need to specify the host, the namespace, the client. And then you will have to pass all of this as an argument for kfp.client. Now in the next code, I can create the experiment and a run. So here I am passing the data path. I am importing date time library so that I can append the date time to the run. With this, I can differentiate between two different runs. So I am specifying the experiment name with the appended date time, run name and namespace. The argument is data path and then I compile this and then from client.create run from pipeline function and I am providing pipeline function, experiment name, run name and arguments as function arguments. I have only one namespace so it is not compulsory for me to define that. If you have multiple then please specify the namespace as argument as well. You can see the commented code. For fetching the data if a secret is required then you can use this code. In this you first have to configure the pipeline. You will have to define each and everything. You can configure where your secret is stored for example and then pass this information to the client. Specifically in the client.create run from pipeline function. Add the secret as an argument. So if I open my browser and go to the experiments, you will see a new experiments that is still running. If we open the experiments, then we can see the run information. If you open the run, you can see that it has created the volume that is T volume. If we click on this, we can get all the information. We can see the details, the volumes, the logs. Now we can see the next step is still running. And just now it completed. We can see so much information for each and every step. Now we are going to wait for all the steps to complete. I have fast forwarded this step. For you, it will take a lot more time. When all the steps are completed, we can see the main logs. We can open them or we can download them. As you can see, I've opened them with the test flow editor and we can see what all things were done and how much time they take and how much space was needed. Thank you very much.